you're shopping for a new car in 2024, there's more good options than there ever has been. A car might be one of the most expensive things you buy in your entire lifetime, and how it's perceived might be really important to you. It can be a status symbol, it can be a reflection of your priorities in life, or it can, can show your personality too, depending on what type of vehicle you like. If you've been on the internet in the last, I don't know, five years, you've probably seen a tier list. Um, I did things a little bit differently. I assigned some different categories to it. And I really just want to go through and give my opinion, like my personal take as someone that has spent uh, the last few months of my life just diving in and really trying to understand like the granular details of specific trim levels of specific makes and models. Um, and really just kind of how, how I see the overall car universe and where they kind of rank in terms of like perception and just desirability. All that said, let's get into it. So let's talk about the tiers. So up at the top, we've got aspirational. These are brands that have a long legacy and are very widely recognized as luxury vehicles, something you probably spend a lot of money on. Next, we've got coveted. These ones not quite as high as aspirational, still nice, generally regarded as luxury vehicles. Then we've got the more special tier. These are gonna be slightly above more mainstream vehicles, but still not quite on that luxury level. Right below that, we've got our everyday heroes tier. These are gonna be mainstream brands that have enjoyed a really strong reputation and represent a really solid choice. And our bottom tier, below expectations. These are brands that maybe once started high and fell from grace. They're just, they don't meet our expectations. Just a disclaimer, if this is not obvious, this is purely opinion-based, right? We're talking about desirability of cars and perception of cars. My opinion on a certain car brand may vary widely from how you feel about a certain car brand. And that's totally good. Let's discuss it in the comments. All right, first let's do BMW. I'm gonna put BMW solidly in the aspirational category. BMWs have been around for a long time, regarded as the, the ultimate driving machine, a staple in terms of luxury and performance. Next, we've got Mercedes-Benz. I would put Mercedes-Benz pretty close there. I don't know if I would rank one necessarily above the other. Mercedes-Benz is definitely a brand that's seen more for prestige, even though recently they've gotten a lot more into their AMG and kind of sporty lineup. Let's talk Mitsubishi. So this is the first one I'm going to put in the below expectations tier. If you grew up in the 90s and early 2000s like I did, you remember the Lancer Evo as this really amazing car. I wanted one so bad when I was a teenager. and they really just have kind of fallen off. And it's really just kind of sad to see what, what this brand is now. There's just definitely much better options out there. Next, we've got Mini. And we're going to put that in the more special tier. Um, they are made by BMW now, which is honestly a good thing. They're more premium feeling than a mainstream brand. They're not quite on the luxury tier, but the price point is pretty fair. Lexus. So this one might be a little bit divisive. I'm gonna put Lexus in the coveted tier. I don't think Lexus quite has the prestige of some of the German brands like BMW and Mercedes-Benz. Uh, they're clearly focused on more on you know ride quality, comfort, overall craftsmanship, super nice interiors. As far as the sporting edge, they've gotten a little bit more into it with some of their more recent offerings. They're just not quite on that same level as something like a BMW or Mercedes-Benz. Next, let's do Lincoln. I would also put Lincoln in the coveted tier. I don't think Lincoln is quite on the same level as something super high end. If you didn't know any better, you wouldn't know these were made by, by Ford, which I think that's just a testament to the intentionality that Lincoln has put into their, their designs recently. Ah, Tesla. I'm gonna put Tesla in the aspirational tier. There's just something about the, the aura of a Tesla. It, it, they were miles ahead of other automakers in terms of electric vehicle technology. Even still, I think we're we're getting to a point where maybe some manufacturers are kind of catching up, but just the the blend of tech and the the integration of everything, the way they drive, they have that futuristic design. There's really nothing in the car except that big screen. There's just something different and unique about them. All right, Volvo. Now, I, I'm having a debate here. I'm, I think I'm going to put these in the coveted tier. They're just really clean. Uh, they're super unique, being the only automaker from Sweden. They really carry through that Scandinavian design. And you can get super high-end models with things like a, a crystal knob shifter, which is super cool. Toyota is going in the Everyday Heroes tier. It's actually the brand that inspired the Everyday Heroes tier. I know a lot of viewers of this channel 
big Toyota fans. They're my, my most viewed videos by far. If you're buying a Toyota product, it's probably going to last you a really long time. It's probably not going to cost you that much in maintenance, and it's probably going to hold up really well over the course of time. Toyota pays a lot of attention to their quality control. Toyotas are just a solid choice all around. All right, let's follow up Toyota with Honda, which I'll also put in the everyday heroes tier. Honda and Toyota battle it out on so many models. You've got like the RAV4 versus CRV, Corolla versus the Civic, Sienna versus the Odyssey. Honda and Toyota are so closely intertwined, and I think that's because they both have some of the same good qualities. They're both super easy cars to live with, very well built, low maintenance costs, last a long time, just both solid options. Next, we've got Fiat. If uh, some of you didn't even know that Fiat still sells cars in the United States, they do, and they're not really anything exceptional. When they returned to the United States with the 500, there was the Abarth model that I thought was super cool at the time. The quality is just really not that good. We've recently seen Fiat come out with a, a super cheap electric car. I don't know much about it, but I, I don't think it's going to be able to keep up in terms of some of these other uh, electric cars coming out. But I guess we'll see. Acura. So this is another one of those brands I'm kind of between. I'm going to put it in the more special tier. Comparing Acura to Lexus, I really don't know if Acura has garnered that same brand cachet that Lexus has. They just recently got away from this feeling of just being a kind of a, a fancy Honda. Obviously, Lexus is the luxury brand of Toyota, but I don't think Lexus really feels just like a nice Toyota. I just don't think perception wise or desirability wise that many people are choosing an Acura over a Lexus if they're cross shopping the two. This may come as a surprise. I actually would put Mazda on that same more special tier with Acura. You can tell they just take an artful approach with with creating their vehicles. And if you've said in a Mazda, like if you're cross shopping a Mazda with, say, a Honda or a Toyota. As soon as you sit inside one of them, they feel a little bit more elevated. I have a really high opinion of Mazda, so I'll leave it at that. Next, let's talk GMC. GMC basically just makes trucks and SUVs. GMC is really well known for the Denali line, which the Denali is not actually a vehicle. The Denali is a trim level of many vehicles. So like you have a Yukon Denali or a Sierra Denali. Relatively recently, they came out with their AT4 lineup of kind of off-road geared, more rugged vehicles. Like they're stepping it up. Cadillac, I am going to put in the coveted tier. Cadillac's an interesting one, right? I think that Previously, and we're talking like decades ago, Cadillac was super elevated as far as like this was the pinnacle of, you know, there's the, the expression that, oh, that's the Cadillac of whatever, right? They've improved on this recently, but I think there was a period of time where Cadillacs just felt like a really expensive Chevrolet, uh, but they've really kind of come into their own. Some of their performance models, unfortunately, I don't think that many people even know or really care, uh, but they make some pretty impressive vehicles. Uh, they've done a good job of shifting away from this idea of a Cadillac being kind of a, you know, an old man car into something that is, you know, desirable by young people. They, somebody that's looking at like a BMW or a Mercedes, I think they'd have a harder time maybe going with a Cadillac unless it was for, you know, they could get a better deal on one or something like that. All right, Nissan. Nissan, why you got to do me like this? Nissan is going in the below expectations. Look, I don't know what happened to Nissan. Okay, they made some really sweet cars. They just haven't innovated or really changed anything in a super long time, even like their newer models. So the new Frontier came out, which is not really the new Frontier. It's basically the same Frontier with a, you know, pretty extensive overhaul. But even the new models sometimes feel dated. They mostly sell Rogues at this point. I think they discontinued the Titan. Nissan just seems really lost as a brand. On that note, Nissan's luxury division, uh, Infinity, is also below expectations. It's got the same, same situation, right? I step in one and it's like, okay, am I looking at a 2008 Infinity or am I looking at a 2022 Infinity? Like you just, you can't really tell. They're, I think they're just confused and they haven't really offered anything like super groundbreaking. Infinity is a car you buy if you want a nice car at a very discounted price. I think that's just a testament to like, you either change and adapt and grow with the market or you you fail. And I think Infinity is, is on its way to failure. Next, let's talk Chrysler. 
Chrysler literally created the minivan, right, with the, the original caravan and grand caravan. So Chrysler is an everyday hero. All right, let's talk Alfa Romeo. So Alfa Romeo's an Italian brand by Heritage. Um, they're under that Stellantis umbrella. So a lot of people actually didn't realize this, but Fiat, Alfa Romeo, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, those are all under the Stellantis umbrella. There's some other brands they have in, uh, you know, other parts of the world. That the Alfa Romeo brand has a lot of really strong racing heritage. The Quadrifoglio models are so cool, so fast. They sound so good. They just, they have a lot of issues. As, you know, the resale value is terrible. They, they're, they're definitely special cars. There's just some things you have to kind of accept if you wanted to drive an Alfa Romeo. Hyundai, I'm going to put Hyundai solidly in the everyday heroes tier. The whole Hyundai Kia saga has been kind of fascinating. Like they had a bad reputation for a really long time as just being really, really cheap cars. Now I think they've they've kind of moved up, they constantly innovate. They refresh their models regularly. Um, we'll go ahead and throw Kia in that Everyday Heroes tier as well, just so I can keep talking about how much I like these new Hyundais and Kias. They're just they do so much to keep their vehicles fresh. Like they'll do you know mid cycle refreshes of the exterior styling. They upgrade the tech in their cars. They upgrade the features. They're both doing some really cool things as far as uh, electric vehicles and, you know, performance vehicles. Like you've got the Kia EV6 GT that is just like an insanely fast electric car from a, a mainstream brand. In Kia, they had the, the Stinger GT, which was super cool performance car, right? To be the first car brand to come out of uh, your country and be sold in the United States, they have done exceptionally well and they're just continuing to grow and grow and make better and better and more impressive options. And with that, um, we'll talk about Genesis. So Genesis is kind of the luxury arm of the Hyundai Motor Group. So very closely related to Hyundai and Kia. I think they've done so much to not only provide excellent driving dynamics, so they, they kind of have that sporty edge, but they also, their, their interiors are just opulent. They, they do a lot to feel special. I just don't think in the public opinion, I don't think they're quite elevated to like the level of a Lexus or something like that. Um, I think the quality is all there and I think they're great cars. Uh, I think they've just got a few more years to go before they're really a little bit more widely recognized. Volkswagen. Everyday heroes. I think Volkswagen has gotten somewhat of a bad reputation in terms of reliability. They offer some pretty reasonably priced options if you, and they've always kind of had this kind of fun vibe to them uh porsche porsche absolutely aspirational i'm actually going to move this all the way to the front of the list these are in no particular order but i think porsche deserves to be in the front of the list um porsche so th they're in the volkswagen auto group family so they share things you know they share some of the bits with like audis and uh vws but porsche is just so elevated and they just, they feel so special. They engineer them so well. They handle so well. They feel like really nice cars. But Porsche is just an awesome brand. Definitely aspirational. All right, let's talk Audi. So Audi, I'm also going to put in the aspirational tier. One thing I really like about Audis, their styling has been so consistent for such a long time that even like a 2008 Audi model still looks like a really nice car. Audi has some very, very cool offerings. I think they have some of the best lighting in the business. Um, Audis just have a really cool vibe to them right jeep i'm gonna put jeep in the everyday heroes tier i think what one thing jeep does well is they offer a really wide range of options so like you can go buy a grand cherokee for close to like forty thousand dollars that had the laredo trim which is kind of the base trim and that's you know it's got pretty decent features and then you go up to like the summit trims and the summit reserve and you've got like quilted leather and these crazy sound systems and screens and the dashboard and all sorts of stuff. Um, and then, then the wagon, your models. So Jeep is kind of hard. I think if you, if you balance everything out, you take some of the, the more disappointing things, but then you add in some of the really nice models. I think Jeep is solidly an everyday hero. It's just a, it's an iconic brand. So let's talk Buick. And I remember when uh, Pontiac and Saturn were discontinued by GM and Buick stuck around 
I mean, I was, I think I was a child at the time, but I was still, I was very confused. I was like, why are you keeping Buick? I saw Buick as kind of the, the least like cool of those brands. Buick is at this point, just kind of like a step above a Chevrolet. Uh, they have some nice features and some pretty nice interiors at kind of a lower price point. I just think as far as the perception of the Buick, they would be seen as a little bit nicer of a car than maybe an equivalent like Chevrolet model. But I don't think they're going to be on the level of a Cadillac. Honestly, I don't think they're even on the level of like a GMC. Let's talk Jaguar. Jaguar, this pains me so much. I have to put Jaguar in the below expectations tier. Many people don't know this. They're actually owned by a company called Tata Motors, which is based in India. Um, so they own Jaguar Land Rover. It's clear that they've invested more time and energy into the Land Rover brand than to the Jaguar brand. I, I hope they do something. I, I would hate to see Jaguar not be able to continue as a brand, but for right now, they're below expectations. Which takes us to their stablemate, the Land Rover. Now look, I'm gonna put Land Rover in the aspirational tier. The cars have a presence. Um, they have a reputation. They have like a, you know, a societal kind of place. Like, you know, Range Rovers are definitely like something you buy because you have a lot of money. They're notoriously unreliable and in the shop regularly. So quality is definitely questionable on Land Rover, but there's just something special about Land Rover, Range Rover. Let's talk Dodge. I'm going to put Dodge in the everyday heroes. Dodge has had such a great run with the Challenger and Charger models. Dodge has really created this kind of uh, iconic, uh, you know, muscle car vibe. Like they brought back the muscle car. You compare like a Challenger to what it should compete with maybe, which is like a Mustang and a Camaro. And you've got the Mustang and Camaro that are just kind of these really dialed in like sports, almost like track cars, right? Like they're, they're very dialed in from a suspension handling perspective, lightweight. And then you've got the Challenger, which is just like this big, massive two-door coupe. Uh, with a big loud V8 engine. Well, unless you get the, the V6 engine, but I don't know necessarily what their direction is going to be. I know they unveiled that uh, electric car, the electric charger concept a while ago. Um, I, I'll be interested to see where they, where they go um, moving forward. Subaru. I got to put Subaru in Everyday Heroes. They've always had kind of a little bit of a cult following, not quite on the level of Jeep, but... If you like Subarus, you like Subarus. I don't think I think Subaru has gotten away from kind of the enthusiast in terms of performance. Uh, so they've really dialed in to this, uh, you know, kind of active lifestyle brand. And I, I think they they do it better than anyone. I feel like they're maybe the original ones to really kind of identify with people that like to spend time outside. Uh, down to the last couple here. So Chevrolet got to put in the everyday heroes tier. They've done a good job of kind of offering some lower price offerings, like the Chevy Trax had a super, has a super low starting price. Uh, and that's actually, a, I mean, it's a really cool looking car and it provides a lot of tech for the price. So I, I like that they're kind of focusing on that part of the segment. And then obviously the Chevy Silverado, um, you know, rivaling with uh, the F-150 and the Ram. Ford is going to go in that Everyday Heroes tier. They discontinued their cars not too long ago. I think the Fusion was the last car they sold. They made a decisive choice to stop making cars to sell in the United States. They still sell cars in other countries, like in the UK. They really focused their energy and resources into the truck game. That's where you get like the new Bronco um, and, you know, the Raptor vehicles and things like that. So they definitely know their strengths. All right, so that is our uh, that's our tier list of desirable vehicles. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Uh, I hope this gave you some insight and uh, hopefully didn't make you too angry <laughs> if I put your uh, your brand of car in the maybe the below expectations tier. I'm sorry. Um, again, this is just my opinion. But uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Uh, until next time, take care.